Good evening, everyone. We'll just give people a few moments to come online and then we'll get underway. All right, um, we've got people joined us now and I'm sure more people will join us as we start. Um, welcome everyone, good evening. My name is Kylie Hayward and with me tonight is Erica Marsam and we are from the ANSCAP team and we're delighted to be with you tonight sharing um, our, our great initiative of ANSCAP and telling you all a bit more about um, how it works, what it is, and um, how you as pharmacists can use it to um, be recognized. Get my slides to move, there we go. So I'll start by um, acknowledging that this is um, and always will be um, Aboriginal country and acknowledge that in the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community and pay our respects to their elders past and present and of course any First Nations people who are with us tonight. So uh, hopefully you're a little bit aware of ANSCAP and why we're giving this presentation. So ANSCAP, or the Australian New Zealand College of Advanced Pharmacy, is an initiative that was launched in October last year as a way to really provide um, pathways or programs for pharmacists initially, but um, technicians and assistants as we move forward, a way to be recognised in their career. So... Um, where this has come from is that that knowledge, uh, I think, amongst the, the pharmacy community that um, where we are when we first register as a pharmacist is very different to um, where we are as we move through our career and the skills, the expertise and the knowledge that we gain as we move through that. ANSCAP itself is very much underpinned by our competency standards. So everything is woven into this because they really form the basis of everything that we do as pharmacists within Australia. And the reason that we really um, brought ANSCAP into existence is that we recognised that there weren't any recognition programs that were really in place to formally recognise people within the Australian environment. And that's particularly, we know, within the community pharmacy environment where there's a less structured um, career pathway in place. And so really we wanted to create something um, for all pharmacists that was prospective. So it was something that was forward-looking that helped them build throughout their career and uh, gather evidence as they moved forward and also help them plan where they wanted to be in their career. We also wanted something that was adaptable and could move with individuals. So we've got a very mobile workforce. We know that people move between sites, they move between practice settings, they move uh, within states or even across Australia and New Zealand. So the beauty of ANSCAP is that what you build and your recognition goes with you, regardless of whether you stay at one place one workplace or whether you move to a new practice setting. We also wanted to build something that acknowledged specialty. Within pharmacy, we have such a breadth of diversity of practice, particularly as we move through our careers. And we wanted something that really was able to acknowledge that specialty practice that our practitioners have, again, across the practice spectrum and across practice settings. We really wanted it to also be objective. So this is something um, where you build your recognition based on what you do as an individual. So it's very much ob objective and based on the things that you're doing in your workplace. And of course, we needed something that was really easy to engage with um, and very simple to use because we're all very time poor. Um, we don't have a lot of time in our lives for extra stuff. 
So we wanted to make sure that the platform that house houses ANSCAP and the recognition programs was very straightforward. Um, internally, we like to think that if the platform is difficult to use or you can't find something there, then we've done something wrong because it really should be extremely intuitive and easy to work with. And I guess the overarching goal is to really address those gaps that we have identified within pharmacy for professional advance advancement. So in terms of then what are the benefits of being recognized through ANSCAP, it obviously is a way to broaden your professional opportunities uh, by showing that you are actually interested and, and care about your professional development and your growth as a pharmacist. Um, it, that's really appealing to employers and can make you really the standout candidate for particular roles that you might be interested in applying for. It provides you, like I said, with a pathway um, for your career, helping give you goals and guidance to how you might reach those different points. It also gives you a different professional community, a different group of people who you can network with who are all on that same journey towards recognition with you. And it also then, from an interprofessional perspective, provides a way for our um, medical and allied health colleagues and our, our patients to really understand where we are as pharmacists and the level of experience and expertise we bring to our practice. And of course, overall, we are working towards a connection with remuneration. This is obviously a longer term goal because there's a lot of work that needs to be done when you're working with seven states and territories and multiple different um, industrial awards. But in the longer term, we very much see that connection between ANSCAP recognition and increased remuneration. So if we look at the structure of ANSCAP again, you'll see that um, ANSCAP is very much aimed at the post-registration phase. So the working towards recognition uh, through ANSCAP starts once you're registered, generally registered as a pharmacist. We do have aspects of, of the ANSCAP programs that are in place for our students and our pre-registration pharmacists, but I won't speak on those tonight. I'll focus on the, the registered pharmacist aspects of it. So you'll see that there are three levels of recognition that you can work towards throughout your career. And those are resident, registrar and consultant level. So resident level is really that first step where you have um, built a kind of robust foundation of knowledge and skills and expertise. At registrar level, it's then that next step up where you're able to provide that, um, that knowledge and that care to more complex uh, individuals or more complex healthcare settings, potentially in a more specialized practice area. And then at consultant level, these are really our pharmacists who are leaders in their different areas. They're people who are perhaps leading services or overseeing complex um, patient interactions or working within a collaborative environment um, and are, are really helping to shape what practice looks like within their practice setting. So when you're recognized through ANSCAP at one of these three levels, you're also granted post-nominals and you can see those there. So you can be either an ANSCAP res, an ANSCAP reg, or a FANSCAP, which is a fellow of the college. You'll also see that at registrar and consultant level, as I mentioned, you can be recognized for your specialty areas of practice. And these are, um, designated by different abbreviations after your uh, post-nominal. So here I've got community pharmacy, but we do have uh, over 40 areas of specialty practice which individuals can choose to be recognized in. So when we launched, we started with 40 areas um, and you'll see there are a number of those there, including community pharmacy, um, 
things like medicines information, transitions of care, um, really uh, uh, showing the broad spectrum of practice within the pharmacy environment. Since we launched, we've also added another six areas of specialty practice. And this has really been based on feedback from um, pharmacists across the country after we launched. And we really want to make sure that that is how ANSCAP evolves, that we take on board the feedback and the thoughts from people who are using the programs and using the college and reflect on that and reflect on the new practice areas that are appropriate. So these were added uh, in February, and you'll see there that um, there are some that perhaps are more applicable in the, in the primary care setting, so perhaps things like men's health or rural and remote health as well. You can select either one or two specialty practice areas to be recognised in. And the reason that we did this is that we know that some people do have split roles that they work perhaps across two different areas or two different practice settings, and also to allow for some contextualization of people's roles. So for example, in um, uh, we know that we've got some people who are working in community pharmacy, but also in GP clinics. So they might choose um, community pharmacy, but also primary care, just to give that contextualization to their role. So a bit of the, the nitty gritty, how do you actually go about being recognized? So we've got two main programs in place at the moment for people to be able to be recognized. And the first of these, which has been running and from launch is our foundation program. And that's a way that we're able to recognize prior professional experience. The reason that we've got this in place is that we know that there are lots of pharmacists out there who are already practicing at resident, registrar and consultant level. So we wanted to create a process that allowed people to be recognized based on this existing experience. This allows us to celebrate where people are already at in their careers and give those who are earlier in their career an idea of where they can um, and what they can achieve. So the foundation program is available until the end of April. And you'll see there that we have some guiding criteria in place for what uh, the, the time it may take people to reach recognition at or reach practice at each of the different levels. I would like to stress that this is guiding uh, information, that guiding criteria so hitting the eight year mark doesn't automatically mean that you are practicing as a consultant. This is really very much a guide to how long it may take people to reach that level of experience and capability. We do have uh, role descriptors in place that we will be able to direct you to that give an idea of what practice looks like potentially at each of these different levels that you can use to help you decide which level of practice that's appropriate for you. In terms of what you need to supply when you apply for recognition at these levels, for all of them, you do need an up-to-date CV. So this is a good opportunity to have a look at your CV and dust it off and update it if you haven't for a while. And then you'll also need a letter of support. So this does need to be from someone within your pharmacy leadership team. So if you're applying at resident level, this could be a, a more senior pharmacist who you work with. If you're applying at registrar or consultant level, then this uh, really does need to be uh, perhaps the the owner or the manager of your pharmacy or um, the most senior pharmacist that you have in your practice setting. At, re uh, at registrar and consultant level, you do also need to nominate the areas of specialty that you want to be recognized in. And like I said, this could be one area or it could be two areas. And at consultant level, we do also ask that you provide a letter of support from an interdisciplinary colleague. 
Now, this may be a medical uh, professional, so this may be a GP that you interact with regularly, or it could be uh, another allied health professional um, or a completely non-pharmacy, uh, non-health person, depending on the work setting that you're in. We also ask that you write a, a, a personal statement. So just a very brief statement that tells us a little bit more about you, your scope of practice, and also your sphere of influence. So what is it that you do in your day-to-day -day role? And how do you show that you practice um, at the level at which you're wishing to be recognized? When you um, have got those documents together, you can uh, log into the ANSCAP platform and submit those. And uh, at the moment, it's taking us about a day or two to get the recognitions approved or to come back to people and ask for additional information um, if they haven't provided sufficient for us. The other pathway that is available for people is what we call our independent program. And this is a really a kind of choose your own adventure way of building a portfolio towards recognition at one of those three levels. And the way this works is very much based on what we call learning experiences. So these are activities or assessments that you would do as part of your day to day work or perhaps things that you do tangentially to your work. So you may be involved in um, external organizations um, or teaching at universities and things like that. And you pull those together uh, in a, an online platform, the ANSCAP platform, which allows you to build a number of learning experiences towards recognition at those different levels. The types of learning experiences that you need to undertake or that you would um, need to put into your portfolio um, are, are differentiated into uh, what we call core learning experiences. So those that uh, everybody has to do, which means that they have demonstrated a, a breadth of practice across the um, competency standards. And then a number of elective learning experiences so those elective learning experiences allow for flexibility and for people to really be able to showcase what they do in their particular area of practice. What we expect to see of people as they grow throughout their career will also vary. So what, what uh, is considered a core learning experience is a little bit different for those people working towards resident recognition than what it would be to then registrar and consultant level, where uh, they're obviously a lot more experienced and have a far broader um, range of skills and breadth uh, a sphere of influence. One thing I will point out is that in order to um, work towards recognition or build a portfolio towards recognition through the independent program, you do first need to be recognized through the foundation program. Um, the caveat to that is, oh, I should say, if you're not recognized through the foundation program at a particular level, you can certainly start building through the independent program, but you have would have to start at the beginning and build towards resident level, then registrar, then consultant. So if you are someone who is perhaps a little bit further on in your career, um, and you don't want to have to, to start at the beginning, then I would suggest thinking about that foundation recognition um, and where you might sit on that spectrum of practice already. That's a very quick overview of ANSCAP um, and you know how it's applicable to those working in community pharmacy and primary care. Very much happy to take questions now. Erica is been monitoring the chat box so oh, everyone's been very patient and waited till the end which was nice <laughs> please if you do have questions <laughs> pop them in the chat now 
I think Theresa, you might have answered Theresa's question just as um, they were typing it in, um, but I think you explained, can, can I ask what is happening after April 24th? So um, as Carly mentioned, the independent program that we showed you a very quick glimpse of is the is really ANSCAP, what ANSCAP is moving forward. The foundation program is this opportunity to slot you in with your prior professional experience. So you can either um, have the post-nominal that reflects your practice um, before ANSCAP was created and so from the get-go um, or so that you can start building a portfolio to a level that's relevant to your practice from day one so it's really giving you that opportunity if you're not already starting on that foundation level uh, resident level I should say sorry <laughs> <laughs> um, and then would you would overseas experience be taken into account so um, yeah as Kylie said I can help with that one as well um, the years of practice are a guide um, to have you to point you in the right direction um, for which level you would be um, recognized or might be appropriate for you to be recognized at in ANSCAP uh, we are happy to accept overseas experience as contributing to those years of experience, but because ANSCAP is an Australian and New Zealand college, and, it, and if you are in Australia, um, it's practicing off, um, it's based off recognition of the Australian competency framework for pharmacists. Uh, you do need to be currently practicing in Australia in a role that al aligns with that experience that you've had overseas. Um, so, for an example, if you were um, being recognized as a registrar within ANSCAP through the foundation program, you would, and because you've held a position overseas as a pharmacist with, with that sort of lines with a registrar level practice, you would also need to currently hold a registrar level um, uh, experience or practice have experience within the Australian setting uh, to allow you to have that on your CV to show that experience in the Australian setting and against the competency standards, but also to have that letter of support from um, an Australian workplace as well. Yep. Um, so Cecilia has asked, are all community pharmacists who have three to four years experience eligible for registrar level? Uh, so the three to four ex years experience um, is, a, is a guide to resident level as opposed to registrar level. Um, but as we said, this is very much a guide to how long it might take somebody to reach those years of experience. So that three to four years experience is where we expect someone to potentially have met um, the resident level of skills and competence. And then building from there, somewhere around that five to eight year mark is how long we expect that it may take people to reach registrar level. Um, you have another follow-up question there about the April 2004 deadline. Maybe, um, maybe Kylie, if you show the funnel, maybe that will yes, help you as well. Sorry, we'll go backwards. Okay, fine. Hmm. Oh, come on, I can do it, funnel. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so um, so I guess like these, uh, building a portfolio, you'd have a, a, um, you can see from this funnel, as we call it, the sideways funnel, um, the first recognition point is resident, then the second is registrar, and the third is consultant. And you can't build a registrar portfolio for registrar recognition until you hold resident recognition. Um, so if we didn't have the foundation program, everyone being recognized in ANSCAP would first have to start to be recognized as a resident, then a registrar, then a consultant, if that's where they're heading. So the foundation program allows you to skip building the portfolios that are required for, um, say, a resident level if you're being recognized as a registrar. So it lets you skip building the portfolios um, that would have been required if you were starting from the beginning in the funnel. Uh, so for that example that I'm saying, if you were being recognized as a registrar via the foundation program, um, you submit the documentation 
that Kylie's gone through. And it means you don't have to build a portfolio, a resident portfolio, nor a registrar portfolio, where if we didn't have that foundation program, you would have to build both of those portfolios to achieve that recognition. And that's what will happen after April, the end of April. Um, if you don't gain recognition through the foundation program, you will have to start by building the whole portfolio for the resident level, uh, regardless of what you think aligns with your current practice. Um, a question from Clea around saying a lot of these specialties have no formal training programs. Yep. And how can you assess them and grant competency level? So that's a great question, um, Clea. And a lot of work uh, went into deciding um, in terms of the points of recognition, what that looked like, how uh, how we determined what was a sufficient amount of work to have reached those uh, levels of recognition. We had expert working groups. Uh, we went through um, Delphi um, surveys and methodology um, and also looked then in terms of what does specialty practice look like in those areas and how can we define that and show um, in a portfolio how they align. So there has been a lot of work in the background uh, to, to come up with this and to come up with those different levels of recognition. Um, and also then a lot of work also happening now around training pathways and um, supporting people to build towards recognition in those specialty areas and also at, at resident level in that general, um, more general foundational uh, practice. Um, across the board as well. So yeah, that's very much something that we had a lot of time to spend a lot of time thinking about. And uh, again, it connects back to those competency, the competency framework as well. So as Kylie said, all those Delphi um, method um, was had to map those things that we do as pharmacists every day um, that show we're practicing on that advanced, within those advanced competency domains, um, we've mapped those activities to the framework for you. So we've sort of tried to do, I guess, the hard work in terms of deciphering the competency frameworks and um, all of the um, domains and competencies and um, the practice objectives and things within each of those um, to map them to what you do and um, really put that onto a platform that helps you to really easily uh, document all the amazing things you're doing as a pharmacist against those different uh, against those different competencies. So, hopefully, we streamline that process using those 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 documents. Um, and Therese has said, my understanding is this is all on a volunteer basis. So, what are the advantages of ANSCAP? And I yeah, I did touch on this very briefly at the beginning. So, yes, absolutely. At the moment, this is very much something that you are doing for yourself as an individual and for your own, um, you know, your own professional uh, recognition and also development. But this is uh, very much something that, um, you know, it shows that you are you are wanting to be recognized, that you are um intending and to develop as a professional um, and, and show that real depth of thought about your career trajectory and where you want to go, which is very, you know, very much an appealing thing for employers um, as people who have done a lot of interviews for pharmacists over our time. Um, you know, you, you, you want to stand out from the crowd. So, you know, what are the ways that you can actually do that? And this is one of the ways that you can show that is that actually, you know, you've thought about your career, you've thought about where you're going and you've um, invested in yourself and actually having that recognition in place. Um, and like I said, it really does offer a way for um, our, our medical and allied health colleagues to understand where um, our pharmacists are at in terms of their career development. And also probably, well, definitely the most important thing is that it helps our patients understand um, what they are getting from their pharmacists as well. Um, you, oh, Eric has put a few things in there. Oh, um, yes. Replied. That's all right. No, no, that's good. <laughs> um, so, Claire, if you are granted consultant recognition through the foundation um, program, there isn't a requirement to submit annual evidence to maintain this. There is an annual um, fee to, re to keep your 
um, recognition in place and current, um, there will be a five five yearly at, at the five year mark. There will be a um, revalidation process that will involve um, submission of a um, reflective piece, um, thinking about your career, demonstrating um, that you have maintained your um, your practice at that level and in that practice setting for that five year period, and also then looking at where you want to be moving forward as well. Uh, uh, Rami, yeah, what is the what, what if you are an owner who would sign up? Here? Yeah, great question. So, Rami, if you are the owner and you don't, uh, you're a singular owner, you don't have a business partner or anything like that, um, then uh, you could ask another um, another pharmacy owner or senior pharmacist at another business, another pharmacy that you um, know well to provide a letter of support for you. If you do have a, a partner that you work with, um, then they would be appropriate to provide the letter of support for you as well. Um, oh, sorry. Did we answer the one about um, oh, the Sarah. ongoing um, reaccreditation? Yes, Sarah. I think we did. Yeah. Um, and is there a page limit to how long the CV can be? Look, there is not. Um, your CV can be as long as is necessary to provide an oversight of your roles, uh, what you've achieved in those roles. Um, some people's are longer than others. I would think about it, you know, if you were applying for another position and you really wanted to highlight what you have achieved in your current role or your current past few roles, um, that's what you should be aiming for. So it doesn't need to be, you know, seven pages long. For most people who have applied, it would be somewhere between one and three pages. Um, and in terms of the letters of support, there is a template. Um, but again, that is just a guide and it's a template. Some people provide letters of support where the person who's provided the letter has um, written lots of additional um, stuff to support them. And that's absolutely fine. It doesn't just have to be the template letter. If someone wants to um, add extra information or extra um, support for your application, then that's completely fine. Um, um, I think other competency frameworks you discuss for each specialty available to you and would be a great tool to guide learning. Uh, yeah, so they're readily available. Um, we've actually, I just shared a link to everyone for the ANSCAP Info Hub, um, which is um, a big supporting website. So it spans lots and lots of articles which expand on how to gain recognition in ANSCAP. Um, we've actually also included so the national um of competency frameworks for pharmacists 2016 document. So it doesn't outline specifically for the specialties. It focus, It is um, about uh, all pa practice um, and then it has the advancing practice uh, domains that the learning experiences and the content of ANSCAP has been mapped to in each of those components. So um, you can either head to the ANSCAP Info Hub or do a nice Google as I often do when it comes up for us. <laughs> um. Uh, Sherry, I've just popped up on the screen what the, the recognition and the nomenclature looks like. When you're recognised, you do get a um, certificate that you can download and put up on your wall should you wish to, but you also get um, what we call a digital badge, which you're able to share on social media, or on LinkedIn, um, however you want to. And you can use these post nominals, obviously, in your email signature um, or any other way that you would like to. Uh, Teresa, um, membership is, uh, so men membership of ANSCAP is free for SHPA members because uh, SHPA is the funding body for ANSCAP. So whilst ANSCAP is very much available to everybody, it is something that um, SHPA has supported and funded. So that's why there is a, a membership benefit for SHPA members. You don't have to be an SHPA member to be part of ANSCAP. Um, we recognize that for some people that's not what they want to do. And so you are able to just join ANSCAP directly. Um, and that's an, an annual cost of $120 just to, to for ANSCAP membership. 
Oh, Erica has also just added in, um, we do have uh, some help sessions. So if you've got questions about your particular practice setting or your scenario, or you wanna talk through which specialty areas might fit you best, um, you are able to book in a session to speak with either Erica or I about, about yourself, about, about your recognition application. Um, and that's just a, a little 20 minute session. Um, alternatively, you can email us um, at ANSCAP. It's on the final slide, but I'll pop it in here as well. Um, ANSCAP at shpa.org.au. Um, we're always happy to answer questions or to provide more information. Um, but as Erica said, have a look at the um, info hub. There is a, a breadth of information there um, that will help you and guide you through as well. I think that's all the questions. Yeah, look, thank you everybody for joining us. We really do appreciate it. Um, we're very excited about ANSCAP and um, the potential uh, for recognising pharmacists across um, Australia. Um, and like I said, that will also expand to technicians and assistants later this year. So that's also a really exciting initiative. Um, so, yeah, thank you for your time. This presentation will be available um, and we'll email it out to everyone uh, tomorrow. So um, if you want to watch it again or you want to share the link with your friends and colleagues, please feel free to do so. Um, and we look forward to hopefully receiving applications for recognition from you in the coming weeks.